What if I told you the first World Cube Association competition did not have a time limit? What if I told you that you could choose what cross color your cube could be scrambled on? And what if I told you that Tyson Mao traveled to Peru in order to spread the gospel of cubing? This is the story of the formation of the World Cube Association and some of the events that happened at its inception. In the very early 2000s, the Rubik's Cube almost lived solely online. There was no WCA, no in-person competitions, and no official results. That was when Ron Van Brukum, Chris Hardwick, and Tan Donenbroek decided to try and organize a world championship in December of 2001 in New York. Due to safety concerns at the time, this competition never happened. It was then in 2003 when Dan Gosby locked a deal with Seven Towns, the owner of Rubik's, to cover the costs of a world championship in Toronto. After 21 years of waiting, the 2003 World Championships occurred. In the championships, it was filled with lots of complications, but one in particular was very troublesome. At the World Championships, there were only three stack mat timers for the whole event, meaning at a maximum, there could only be three people solving at a time. What could possibly go wrong? This is the WCA profile of Rafael Algaran. He has only DNF results in 4x4. That's because he never actually figured out how to solve them. And it is told that in the 2003 World Championships, that he started solving on one of the three timers, and he would last for 30 minutes just trying to figure out how to solve a 4x4. When asked to stop, he cited that in the rulebook, there's no rule to stop me. I can go forever if I want to. This would then lead the WCA to make a rule change for time limits. Today in competitions, it is a DNF if you go past time limits. This allows for competitions to stay on schedule. After the 2003 World Championships, a young Tyson Mao would read about the competition in the San Francisco Chronicle. Tyson Mao, along with Ron Van Brukum, would start the World Cube Association in an effort to organize consistent competitions across the world. In writing the rules for scrambling, Tyson Mao found out something very interesting about scrambles for the 2003 World Championships. Tyson wrote, Ian Winokur informed me that he heard the scrambles purposely made the cross hard. The organizer didn't want people to get easy cross cases. This, of course, is completely asinine. It assumes that competitors solve with crosses, which is true unless you're Lars Petrus. Mostly though, once this information got out, competitors would simply say that they solved with a lavender cross or some other color in hopes of getting a random distribution of starting pieces, as opposed to one that is deemed not easy by the organizer. Tyson would then go on to make a standard scrambling method in which the cube was always scrambled with white on top and green in front. He made this decision by saying almost every cube has white, and it's a very neutral color, since it's not a color, as is black. Both white and black aren't really colors. So it would make sense to put something neutral on top. What color then would we put in front? Blue was out of the question, because Japanese color schemes have blue opposite to white. So we were left with red, orange, or green. Of those three colors, my own personal favorite color is green. I prefer green to red or orange, and hence I made my blindfold color scheme to utilize white on top and green in front. Conveniently, being in the position that I was, this became the official WCA color scheme. And to this day, all N by N cubes are scrambled with green in front and white on top in official WCA competitions. Do you have a liking for crazy ideas? That was the email subject line of a Peruvian cuber named Natan Rigenbach as he sent an email to Tyson Mao. Natan, in the 2015 World Championship ceremonial video, describes how he and one other Peruvian cuber, Marvin Castaneda, both one day dreamed of traveling to a country that had a delegate in order to compete. In the creation of a WCA, there were many places without delegates, which means many places like Peru were cut off from competing. That's when in 2011, Tyson packed a bag full of Rubik's cubes and headed to Lima, Peru for the first competition in that country. Riggenbach would then be ordained as a delegate and would go on to delegate many competitions across Peru and South America. He would also go on to be a crucial figure in the Martin Telesforo incident in 2013. To this day, Riggenbach is still an active WCA delegate. 
In 2010, Tyson Mao released this statement to the WCA. As a result of discussions between the WCA board and the WCA delegates, the board has decided to remove Magic and Master Magic from the list of WCA sanctioned events at the end of the year 2012. Starting on January 1st, 2013, the WCA will no longer accept or sanction events and times for Magic and Master Magic. Whereas we realize that many members of our community are extremely dedicated and passionate regarding these events, we've decided to remove them for the following reasons. One, lack of puzzle quality. Magic and Master Magic are root processes that require no thinking. The events are simply a measure of a competitor's ability to perform an unchanging set of physical moves. Although other events such as 3x3 speed solves do have elements that are similar to repetitive physical tasks, the lack of an analysis element in Magic and Master Magic make them less creative activities. 2. Difficulty and Regulation The nature of Magic and Master Magic is such that the start and the finish are critical to the competitor's time. As such, whether intentional or unintentional, it is very difficult for experienced judges to determine whether the solve start or finish has been performed in accordance to the regulations. The WCA has reason to believe that these events have not been held under consistent circumstances around the world. The WCA emphasizes that these inconsistencies are as a result of the nature of the event more than the experience of the officials. Magic and Master Magic events will continue to be held at WCA events throughout the end of 2012, at which time the WCA will archive the results of these events. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please contact your local WCA delegate. Regards, Tyson Mao. That was went out of nowhere on the decision message board. Tan said this, Decisions like this should be done consulting the community first. Magic is one event where we get the most new competitors involved in cubing. Even in my last competition, a 69-year-old competed in Magic and I challenged him to solve the cube. Anyway, if judging is an issue, we should think of a better regulation. Your point one is in contradiction of WCA motto, the World Cube Association governs competitions for all puzzles labeled as Rubik's Puzzles and all other puzzles that are played by twisting the sides, so-called twisty puzzles. Most famous of these puzzles is the Rubik's Cube, invented by Professor Rubik from Hungary. Magic is a puzzle, however, the current format does not scramble a magic. Hence, we could develop a scrambling method. Your point two, we should make sure judging is done fair and according to regulations always. So I do not get this argument. That's when Sebastian replied on the message board by saying, I really wonder why you have to reply to this final decision made while you could have just contributed to the discussion happening on the delegates mailing list before. The community took notice of the proposal before this final decision was made and the vast majority was in favor of removing the events. Yes, and giving him a certificate for being the new oldest person having solved the Rubik's Magic in an official competition while there were three astonishing world records and serious events for which none of the new world record holders received a certificate was one of the most ridiculous moments I have faced in my five years of speed cubing. Besides, why wouldn't it be impossible to challenge him to solve a cube without letting him play with some random tile puzzle first? This motto is obviously obsolete and should definitely be changed as other Rubik's puzzles such as Rubik's UFO or Rubik's Snake are not official events as well. And that's when Tan replied back on this official decision to remove magic on the message board by saying, keep to the topic. If you want to give me feedback how I handle competitions, say it to my face. After the chaos of this message board, the rest is history. Rubik's Magic was later removed in 2012 by the World Cube Association. Creating an organization is hard. It takes a lot of volunteers and sacrifice to take it off the ground. Dan Gasby described organizing the 2003 World Championships as the most exhausting thing I did in my life. Without the dedication of the cubers before us to work out the problems of the past and spread cubing across the world, the WCA and the cubing community would not be where it is today. And for that, we are forever in their debts.